Okay, so when choosing bike parts, the old adage goes lightweight, cheap, durable. Normally, you can only pick two of those things. Well, this S-Road cassette here is super lightweight, way cheaper than others of a similar design, and all the teeth are made from chromoly steel. So is this the ultimate cassette? Well, yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting one, actually. So let's figure it out. Right then, ladies and gents, as much as it pains me to say this, autumn is, yes, yeah, just around the corner, and pretty soon this summer jersey and bib short combo is, is probably not gonna cut the mustard. But luckily, Sirocco, purveyors of the finest cycle clothing and yeah, also sponsor of today's episode, they've got me covered. So when the colder weather starts rolling in, I'll still wear these bib shorts and this short sleeve jersey here, but I'll pair them with these leg warmers and arm warmers. Now, depending on how cold it is, I might also throw in this neck warmer or even this showerproof gilet or cycle vest here. So um, yeah, if I get a little bit toasty out on the ride, I can take off the arm warmers, put them in my back pocket. Same with this gilet, it packs up really small. So basically, I can kind of adapt what I'm wearing mid-ride to suit the weather or the type of riding that I'm, that I'm doing. So uh, yeah, improvise, adapt, overcome. Uh, yeah, so basically, when we're in that midpoint between summer and winter, this is exactly the type of gear that I like to wear. It just makes my life a lot easier, if you ask me. So yeah, if you did want to check out any of the Sorocco gear, then yeah, use my link in the description down below. Save yourself 10% off the entire site, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's great value and it's good quality stuff, if you ask me. Plus, um, using the link helps me out a little bit as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, anyway, enough of that, and let's have a look at this cassette. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, to another, frankly, caffeine-fueled and dangerously sleep-deprived <laughs> Trace Fellow production. My name, as always, is uh, yes, Luke. Right, so the majority of cassettes for your bike, they'll just be plates of steel that are then stamped out, shaped, and stacked on top of each other. They're, they're, well, they'll be cheap to manufacture this way, but they can be pretty heavy. So they're generally a good candidate for dropping some of the weight off your bike. So I've played around with some lightweight cassettes in the past, namely these hybrid aluminium and steel cassettes here. So I've already done a whole video on this and I'll link that up in the top right corner. But essentially, the four or five largest sprockets on these cassettes are, are milled out of a single block or billet of aluminium to save a bit of weight. And then the rest of the sprockets are just your standard steel ones. Um, now they work really well actually, in my experience, but <laughs> the, the obvious issue with these cassettes is the fact that aluminium is a relatively soft material compared to the steel of the chain. So the aluminium teeth tend to wear out pretty quickly. So the next logical step then is to uh, manufacture a cassette out of a single block of steel, right? So you can get nice durable steel teeth on the outside and then you can essentially make the cassette hollow, so save a bunch of weight. The, the issue is that cassettes that are manufactured this way, <laughs> yeah, they're generally very expensive. I mean, SRAM red cassettes are made like this and they're what, like three, <laughs> 315 quid? I think I saw them going for on Wiggle, which is, yeah, pre pretty crazy. However, a while back, I picked up this cassette from a company called JG Bike, their S-Road cassette. So it's manufactured in a very similar way to the SRAM red cassettes. So a monoblock steel construction, which is then hollowed out, so it's it's nice and lightweight. And it, and it cost me 70 quid. So yeah, what's that, like four and a half times cheaper than the, than the SRAM, SRAM red cassette. So um, yeah, is this the ultimate uh, cassette? Well, um, yeah, a little bit complicated, I guess. So yeah, let's find out. Right then, here it is. So a pretty nice looking cassette, this one actually. So let's have a quick look at the construction. So all the gears are made from chromoly, which is a, yeah, it's a steel alloy of chromium and molybdenum, which is a great choice for a cassette because of its high strength to weight ratio when compared to standard steel. Plus this thing is uh, corrosion resistant as a result. So yeah, great choice of materials. So apart from the smallest sprocket on the top here, which you can kind of see is a separate piece, all of the other gears in this cassette are milled out of a single block of that chromoly steel in a kind of hollow cone shape, presumably by a CNC machine. And this back plate, along with the internal spider that holds this cassette onto the free hub, that's made of aluminium. Now, I was slightly concerned that these pins here 
that hold the back plate and the, and the spider in place. I was worried I was gonna have issues, but yeah, I'm about 2,200 miles into this thing so far, and it still seems pretty solid. Plus the teeth from a visual kind of inspection still look absolutely fine. So the overall construction of this thing seems to be pretty on point actually. So let's cover the two biggies, cost and weight. Right, so this S Road cassette here, it's 11 speed and it's an 11 to 28 tooth cassette. I've got a Shimano 105R7000 cassette here. Again, 11 speed and again, 11 to 28. So it's a pretty apples to apples comparison, I think. Now the Shimano cassette, that comes in at 260 grams. Not, not too bad. The S Road cassette, however, 176 grams. So yeah, 84 grams lighter. Nice, tasty little weight saving there. Um, now the R7000, the, one, the 105R7000 cassettes, these go for about 50 to 70 quid online. And this S Road cassette here, this costs me 70 quid on Amazon. So depending on where you buy these s red ones, they might cost you a few quid more, but they're in the same ballpark for cost really. So then on paper, this, this s road cassette is pretty incredible, but what's the catch? Right then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sh shifting performance. This is, uh, this is the big one, right? So it's all well and good. This cassette is cheap, durable, and lightweight, but what's the actual shifting like? Well, when I put it on the bike late last year, I was, yeah, I was happy with it. So the shifting seemed pretty good and it was nice and quiet, so I, I had no problems. But over the last month or two, the shifting at the back has really, really started to bug me. Now, um, I assumed the cassette was fine because it's made of steel and hasn't done a particularly massive amount of mileage. Um, plus there are no visible signs of wear and the chain wasn't like jumping over teeth. On the, on the cassette or anything like that. So I checked everywhere else. I mean, I played around with the shifters, I re-cabled the rear derailleur, I played around with the barrel adjuster at the back there, but it made no difference at all and the, the, the issues kept returning. Um, so fool, maybe foolishly, the last place I looked was the actual cassette there. So um, with that in mind, let me show you the issues with this s Road cassette. Okay, right, so I've got the Shimano 105 cassette slapped on the back here. Now, in general, cassettes have never really had any problems upshifting, so moving the chain from the biggest sprocket through to the smallest. The key to a well-made cassette is that it will easily and reliably downshift, so move the chain from the smallest sprocket through the range to the, to the biggest there. So with that in mind, let me show you what the Shimano one can do. Okay, so I'm gonna downshift, so basically move the chain up the cassette, as it were, one gear at a time. So uh, yeah, let's go. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, shifting on the Shimano cassette, really nice. The, the downshifts are really quick, really consistent, um, even under power really. So yeah, this Shimano cassette is, is pretty good. So let me show you what the S-Road one um, can do, or I guess can't do really. <laughs> so yeah, let's get on. So while I'm changing the cassette, if I could ask you to subscribe and maybe hit like as well, that'd be amazing. So I'm a completely one man show over here. So any help, basically, yeah, subscribing would be amazing. Anyway, enough from me, I'm back to it. Okay, right, so same chain, same, same setup, same everything. Just got that S Road cassette on the back. So let's go again. It's the first one there, not quite made the shift. Oh, there we go, just about caught it, up again. There we go, just made it that time again. Ticking away, let's try again. Not quite grabbed it. It's trying to grab it, it's trying to push it up to the next rocket. Let's just move up. There we go. So moved up twice that time. And again, moving up, it's just not quite caught it. Let's give it another go. So you can see it's just, it's inconsistent. It's not snappy. It's all right up here in the range, but when you get down towards the bottom of the cassette, it really struggles. For some reason, the ramping of the teeth, it's just, yeah, it's inconsistent. So let's try one more time. And that's got it. Yeah, this is a prime example of what it tends to do when you're out and about, and then you have to like drop shift and push up through the range. So yeah, shifting on this s -road cassette is just a little bit inconsistent for my liking. Okay, so I've tried this test here with a brand new SRAM 11 speed chain, a brand new KMC 12 speed chain, and even a bike with legitimate Shimano 105 shifters, and it's, it's the same result each time. So let me show you why the Shimano cassette is so much better. 
Right then, so looking at the profile of teeth on a cassette might, <laughs> might not sound like the most interesting thing in the world, but I thought it was pretty cool. Maybe because I'm a massive fucking loser. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, check this out. So this is the S-Road cassette. The individual teeth have some ramping and contours to help with shifting. But overall, the teeth are relatively homogenous or uniform in profile. Now, look at this. This is the Shimano one. It's basically the same area of the cassette and the teeth are almost jagged and random looking in comparison, but they've been carefully contoured in a manner that helps downshifting. They're basically designed to grab the chain and lift it up onto the next sprocket. If you look at both cassettes side by side, yeah, you can really tell the difference. So this is basically what Shimano call their Hyperglide technology for cassettes. It was, it was introduced in 1989 and it's a series of kind of custom ramps and teeth profiles specifically designed to aid in downshifting, so moving the chain up the cassette as it were. Now you can see that the S-Road cassette, it does use some deliberate shaping of the teeth, but it's nowhere near as distinct or apparent as the Shimano cassette. And this, in my opinion, is what leads to the much more accurate and precise shifting of the Shimano one. But why don't JG Bike just use this design on their S-Road cassettes? Well, two reasons, not sure which is gonna be more likely. Number one, Shimano have an absolute metric buttload of, <laughs> of patents for all their stuff, Hyperglide included, so they probably wanna avoid a lawsuit. And number two, tooling up the manufacturing process to produce these intricate little shapes is not going to be cheap. Um, but I mean, these, these cassettes, they have really good reviews online. So what's the deal? Have I, just got, have I just got a bad one? Well, join me as we venture forth into the final thoughts. So here's the deal. Like I said, when I first put this cassette on the bike late last year, shifting was pretty good, but maybe just over 2000 miles is enough to degrade the shifting performance. Now, I don't think that's a particularly ma massive distance for a chromoly cassette like this. So yeah, not particularly impressive. Now, this is a sample size of one. I've only had one of those cassettes. So the, well, I've got another one in the mail. It's a 12 speed S-Road cassette because it's uh, for an upcoming bike build, actually. So yeah, I guess we'll see when that comes if I run into the same issues. But ultimately, do I recommend getting one of these cassettes? Well, no, probably not, to be honest with you. I mean, if you're really chasing the weight savings on a budget, then these could be worth a look. Plus the materials this thing is, is made of are really great. So if you can get over the slightly degraded shifting, then this cassette still has loads of miles left on it. But for me, it's a no. I mean, when, when the cassette keeps skipping like this. Yeah, drives me absolutely nuts. But I mean, the reviews are really stellar. So four and a half stars with a hundred reviews on Amazon. So maybe I'm wrong here, but these are clearly quite popular. So if you've used one, I would love to know what you think in the comments. Now, lastly, I think I may have actually recommended a few people in the comments go and, go and pick up one of these S-Road cassettes. So to those folks, yeah, apologies. I think I may have led you astray there. Um, but I just, I mean, I was so keen to be able to recommend this cassette to you. It ticks all the boxes for me on paper, but just out on the road right now with this thing, yeah, not so much. Anyway, that is all we've got time for in this episode. Uh, just an FYI, I have so much stuff in the works right now. I've got like six or seven episodes just like in progress in various like states of completion. It's just, I'm, I'm really struggling to carve out enough time uh, to get these filmed. I mean, I still work full time. So uh, yeah, doing these on top of that, that's, that's the sleep deprivation I mentioned at the, <laughs> at the beginning of the episode. But no, I'm, I'm not looking for sympathy, but just uh, yeah, be patient, stuff is coming. But anyway, get subscribed because uh, you don't wanna miss those. So yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode that I put together. And if you've got any questions or comments for me about uh, this cassette or drive trains and stuff in general, then yeah, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you, as many of you as I can. But yeah, honestly, loads of stuff going on right now. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss it, um, I suppose. Right, uh, that's it. So. Look at that, 10 to nine, that is, that is a new record for me. Normally I'm up till like 12 doing these. So um, might even have time for a little bike ride as my, yes, my, my lights are charged. So 
that's that's a go <laughs> right anyway uh that's all that we've got time for so see you in the next one ciao ciao